In a previous video, we discussed how to set up and configure AWS Control Tower for both new and existing AWS organizations. In this video, I wanted to give you an example about how you can apply guardrails to your AWS account using Control Tower. And we will be running through a particular hands-on exercise in the lab to show you how this all works. Let's get started. Okay, so for the purposes of this lab, we're going to actually enable one of the elective guardrails in Control Tower and apply that guardrail to the development account to showcase exactly how it works. Before we do that, though, I also wanted to show you how to set up user accounts using the IAM Identity Center, previously known as the Single Sign-On Service, so that you can actually manage users within the Control Tower environment and give them access to various accounts with specific privileges. So we're going to be doing two things in this lab. Step one is going to involve going into the IAM Identity Center. Remember, this was previously known as the Single Sign-On Service and configuring a user called Bob and a group called developers. And Bob's going to be a developer in the developers group. In addition to that, we're also going to create a permission set to allow Bob to be able to perform various tasks within the Amazon S3 service. Once we've set this up, we're going to grant Bob, our developer, the ability to work with the development account and he will be able to access the development account using the AWS portal service. OK, so rather than going and logging into one of our existing AWS accounts like the management account or a separate identities account and having to do a role switch, we can actually provide a portal environment specify which accounts Bob can get access to, and it works a lot more easier and seamless for Bob to get access to those accounts. So I'll show you how that works in the lab shortly. Once we've set that in place, we're then going to go with step two, where we're going to enable one of the elective guardrails and apply it to the development account. And then I'll show you how that effectively works as well. OK, so let's jump on into the AWS Management Console and do this. OK, so here we are in my AWS management account. This is in the North Virginia region, and I'm currently logged into the management account where I've configured Control Tower and the IAM Identity Center. So we're going to go into IAM Identity Center first for step one. OK, so the IAM Identity Center was previously known as the AWS Single Sign-On Service, right? And it was a means of having single sign-on services across number of different services within the AWS platform, but it also allowed you to use federated identities such as those from SAML 2.0 and Microsoft Active Directory to be able to log in and authenticate against your AWS accounts. Now, for the purposes of this lab, we're using the existing identity service provided by the Identity Center, which is where we create the identities within the Identity Center itself. So for the purposes of this lab, we're going to first start off by creating a group. OK, this is going to be the developers group. OK, so I'll click create a group. We'll call this one AWS developers. And just so that I know that this is a custom group created for the vacant studio, I'll just add the vacant studio there as well. OK, just allows me to separate out what groups I create versus what were created by default. So let's create that group. OK, and there it is there. Next step, let's create a user. So we're going to click add a user. And this is going to be Bob Smith. OK, and to set up Bob Smith, you need to provide an email address. So Bob Smith needs to have an email address in order for this to work. So I'll provide an email address here and then confirm that email address and then provide a first name. So now we've got Bob Smith. These are some additional attributes that you can configure for the user. We're going to leave those as default and click next. And then we're going to add Bob to the developers group that we created just moments ago. Click next and then add user. So that's the first part of step one. Bob Smith has been created as a user and added to the developers group. And in fact, if I go into Bob's email account, I will have an email inviting me to join the identity center. So I need to accept this invitation. Your organization uses IAM Identity Center to provide access to AWS accounts and business applications. Your administrator has invited you to access the IAM Access Portal. This portal will allow me to, you know, basically define which accounts Bob can get access to. And that's the portal address over there. We'll come on to that in a second. Just go ahead and click Accept Invitation and you'll be prompted to set up a password for your identity. In this case, for Bob Smith. OK, so we set up some passwords. 
I'll save that password. And we've successfully created Bob Smith. Okay, so let's just go back to IAM Identity Center. Part two of step one is to define our permission sets. So what we want to do is we want to give Bob Smith and any member of the developers group the ability to work with Amazon S3 in the developers account. So for that, we go into permission sets first. And these are some predefined permission sets. We'll create a new one and you can create a predefined permission set or a custom one. So we'll create a custom one. Click next, and we're going to use an existing AWS managed policy for our custom permission set. Okay, um, you can obviously create your own policies if you want it far more granular than what AWS provides. But I'll just select the AWS managed policy for the purposes of this lab. Click S3 and just search for the S3 full access permission, and then I'll click next and give it a name. And just so that I know that it's for the Vegan Studio, I'll just tag that at the end. Next and create. So we've just created a new permission set called the AWS S3 full access for the Vegan Studio. Um, and this permission set is gonna be used to grant Bob access to Amazon S3 in the developer's account shortly. You will notice that it says they're not provisioned. So that's what we need to do next. For that, you need to go into AWS accounts, select the account that you want to apply this permission set to. So I'm particularly interested in the vacant development account. So I'm just going to select that, assign users or groups. Okay. So we're going to assign the developers group. Okay. Which obviously includes Bob. And we're going to assign the apply the S3 full access vacant studio permission set. Click next and then submit. And at this point in time, the account is being configured so that it is now reprovisioned the account successfully and applied the updated permission sets to the account. So if we go into the development account there and look at our users and groups. So there are six groups there. So we've got the developers group applied and the permission set for S3 Vacant Studio, S3 full access for the Vacant Studio applied as well. Okay, now if I take you back to the permission set, you will also notice that it has been provisioned over there. Okay, so that has now been configured and defined. It is applied to one account, the vacant development account at this point in time, which is what we need for the purposes of this lab. Okay, so next what I wanna do is very quickly test out Bob's account and see what level of access he has and what he, can he do with his access permissions. So if we go back to Bob Smith's email, remember there's that access portal that was provided by AWS. Um, I'm gonna open this up in an incognito window very quickly and log in as Bob. Okay, so we log in as Bob Smith, click next. And the password that we had generated earlier and we are now logging into the AWS environment using this portal service. Now you remember, Bob should only be able to access the development account. And in this particular organization, we have multiple accounts, but you will note that he's only got access to the one account, which is the vacant development account. Okay, and in that vacant development account, we can go into the management console. And in that console, in that account, he should only be able to access the Amazon S3 environment. Okay, so we're logged in as Bob Smith, so that's good. So let's go into Amazon RDS very quickly. And if we go into database instances, you will see I've got an error there. So we're not able to see any of the databases because Bob is a member of the developers group and he has not been assigned any permissions with regards to the permission sets for Amazon RDS. Okay, so that isn't gonna work. But if we go to Amazon S3, he should have full access to that. And there we are. So we are in Amazon S3 and you can see I've already got some um, buckets there already. Okay. And let's go ahead and create a new bucket. And what we'll do is we'll give this a bucket name, Vacant Studio hyphen Bob, and we'll put that in the US East one region. And then we'll basically leave all of the defaults. So we're not gonna enable public access. I'm also not gonna enable bucket versioning. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that at the disabled state and I'll explain why very shortly. And we'll click create bucket. Okay, so Bob is obviously able to log on to the development account and he's able to create buckets. Okay, so that's absolutely fantastic. Okay, right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and move on to step two of this exercise.
Okay, so here we are back at my AWS Management Console. We're still in the IAM Identity Center. What I want to do next is actually take you into Control Tower. So let's go there next. Okay, so now we're in Control Tower. And for step two, what we're going to do is we're actually going to enable one of the elective controls that Control Tower creates. Now, you can configure various controls and by default AWS already deploys various mandatory controls for you. What we're going to do is we're going to enable one of the elective controls that's um, available to you to add additional protection to your AWS account. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on the Amazon S3 versioning element for S3 buckets. So. The use case is basically around the fact that when you're creating S3 buckets, it's a good idea to ensure that versioning is enabled so that you don't accidentally end up deleting objects from your buckets. Now, you have to manually enable versioning. And what we want to do is we want to configure an elective control. We want to enforce the control that says that whenever you create S3 buckets, you must have them configured with versioning enabled. And if you don't have them with versioning enabled, then we want to throw up an error. We want to notify you. We want to alert you to the fact that there are certain resources, certain buckets that haven't been version enabled. So let's see how this works. So in AWS Control Tower, in the dashboard, we're going to click on All Controls. And we're going to find one of these elective controls, specifically the S3 bucket versioning control. So if I just type in Amazon S3, you will see in the list of available controls, there is one here that says detect whether versioning for S3 buckets is enabled. So we're going to click that specific control. Just tick that box and we're going to enable this control. Okay, so specifically, we are going to set up this control for our development OU because that's where our development buckets are going to be created. Uh, and obviously you would want to do it for other OUs and their individual accounts. But for the purposes of this lab, we're just going to do it for the development OU. And we're going to say enable control on the OU. Now, this basically means that we're enforcing this guardrail that says that, you know, versioning should be enabled for all S3 buckets created in accounts within the development OU. And it says here that the AWS control tower is enabled the selected control in your organization unit. It may require several minutes for the operations to take effect. So once we've got this in place, what we can do is we can now go back to the dashboard and ultimately we will be able to scroll down and look at any non-compliant resources or resources that don't fulfill that particular guardrail, that particular control. Now, it does take a little bit of time for this all to happen, but essentially we have just created an S3 bucket when we logged in as Bob using the portal and that bucket was configured without enabling versioning. Okay, and I purposely done that to illustrate this particular control and how it takes effect. So what we are going to expect shortly is that under non-compliant resources, we should find that bucket and any other buckets that have been provisioned without versioning enabled. So I'm going to pause the video over here, wait for a few couple of minutes, and then I'll come back. Okay, and here we are back after a couple of minutes of looking at our non-compliant resources. And you will see, in fact, that two resources have been identified, including obviously Vacant Studio Bob, which is the one that we created, the bucket that we created earlier. And it says that it's a bucket under the S3 service in the North Virginia region, in the development account, in the development OU, and it is a non-compliant resource. Um, and ultimately, apparently, there's another bucket in that same uh, region, in that same account, okay, that is also non-compliant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix this problem. Let's go back to our S3 buckets, okay, and we're gonna log back in as Bob Smith. And this time we're going to go back into the S3 environment. Okay. And we're going to go back into our vacant development account, go into the management console and you can see we've logged in as Bob Smith over there. Okay. Go into Amazon S3 and in Amazon S3, I'm going to go to vacant studio, Bob, we're going to go into properties and we're going to enable bucket versioning. So we're going to enable that and say, yes, to save changes. Okay. And, um, as this other bucket was also not enabled for versioning, let's go and do that as well. So properties, edit 
bucket versioning, enable, save changes, and there we have it. So we've now enabled versioning on both our buckets, the to-do repo bucket and the Vagan Studio Bob bucket that we created a few moments ago. Right, let's head back to Control Tower. Okay, and we're back in Control Tower and it's gonna take a couple of more minutes for it to detect that in fact changes have been made. So I'll pause the video over here again and then we'll come back and see whether or not it's picked up those changes. Okay, and here we are back. So I'm gonna quickly refresh this page. And if we scroll down, you will notice that the two resources that were not compliant have disappeared. Okay, so they're now compliant and therefore not being listed as non-compliant resources. Fantastic. This is exactly what we wanted. And we have now implemented an elective control to ensure that those resources fulfills the compliance requirements that we enforced by enabling that elective guardrail. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and certainly I would highly encourage you to play around with Control Tower and all of its various features. If you like this video, then please go ahead and like and subscribe this uh, channel and we will be publishing more videos shortly. Thank you.